All right, buddy. So, what's your name and where are you from for the people that might not already know? Uh, my name's uh Wesley Deese. I'm from uh North Carolina, uh Burlington area. I don't know if you know too Bur much about that. Burlington? Yeah, yeah, like Greensboro. Yeah, I know, I've heard of it, and every time I drive through it or around it, I think of Burlington Coke Factory. Coke Factory, everybody does. Dude. Everybody does. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, that's uh, Alamance County. I'm in the uh the country part of Alamance County, so uh Okay. Now I was gonna say, um, but so I wasn't like in the city or nothing like that. Like I grew up at with my people in the country, uh we riding four wheelers to anywhere you wanna go in snow camp, like down the roads is cool, you know what I'm saying? Like, ain't nothing wrong with that. I love uh new perspective, you know. Believe it or not, I ain't got too many country cats on the channel, so you know yeah, I love uh, to hear it, man. Yeah, but you can probably tell a little way in the end with me talking and stuff. I'm not, you know, uh, I'm from the country, but you know, I have done time, bro. I've done, yeah, like, you got you got a little bit of suburban mentality, you know how right. it go. And I'm and I'm so far from racist. It's it, it, you know what I'm saying. Not, I'm not the well. That's no good. good. That's yeah. good. Because <laughs> nowadays, man, it seems like everyone got a little. Little little tip in that tea. <laughs> and, and, and honest to God, dude, the penitentiary is really what made me fall back from white guys, bro. Like, <laughs> well, we're gonna get into that, bro. That sounds interesting to me, man. Uh, They're the worst for snitching, telling junkies. I just scared. I can't do. I mean, I, not all of them, but I'm. I don't know. That's just me. That's just me, bro. Person. I understand exactly what you're saying in a sense trust me man all right uh well let's get down to the nitty-gritty all right uh you've been to prison obviously uh yeah. we're gonna get there but i mean what the hell uh caused you to start taking this path man just like everyone else i like to hear that part and drugs i'm guessing drugs party yeah, and all that good yeah, stuff drugs, drugs. <laughs> yeah. yeah man and uh and when the funds wasn't available, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was going to get it, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I I started out, like, of course, like, on smoking pot and stuff all through high school and stuff like that. But then, you know, a little powder and stuff like that. But when I got on the pain pills, dude, it was like, dude, the sickness is, like, unreal, bro. Like, and I was going to get it, bro. Like, I was going to get it. And so by the time I was 18, I accidentally went – to my parents, uh, my mom and my stepfather's house and went in one of their safes and got a couple guns and stuff. And they reported them stolen before they even knew, you know, it was me or anything. And so that pretty much like killed me from going to the military because my stepdad, he was military. Oh, that's what like, your plans were? Yeah, it was when I was young, like young, but like, I don't know, probably, I probably, I'd have did a lot more different things, maybe not the military, but yeah, that was my plans. Um, but just to see how he is, you know what I'm saying? Like he's he's retired out. He's been retired now for like ten years. Um, he was first sergeant, eighty second airborne, and just like his whole life is like military man. Like you know, everything's dope. My weed was dope. You know, it's like anything. You smoking dope? You doing dope? Like, <laughs> crazy. I used, I used to come home man and like. My bedroom when I was at their house, it was the crazy. It was crazy, man. I had like high time magazines postered on. Oh all no, posters. not the high times, <laughs> man! Yeah, had them pretty buds on the wall. Yeah, dude, like for real, and like all all the like coolest Bob Marley posters. I even had this big hemp bag. It was like a big uh, like a I guess it was hemp, you know, like the brown like hemp thing, and it said like um. 50 kilos of red hair since Amelia. Like, I don't know where it comes from. It had to come from, like, next story. You know, like. But I used to come home from school and stuff, whatever, and my stepdad done went in there and, like, busted one of my bones. I'd be like, God, yeah, drugs, man. That's 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 what did it for me. Uh, when I was 18, I caught a um, larceny of firearm and safe crack. And even though I knew the combination to the safe and all, you know, you caught that safe cracking for <laughs> Going in without permission. You know? Ah, well, yeah. <laughs> man, I was like, but they didn't do nothing but slap oh, him oh. the wrist. Slap him the wrist, man. They uh, gave, you said you don't know why they gave you safe cracking because you knew the comp. <laughs> right, I was like, safe cracking? I was like, it sounds bad, bro. Like, yeah. You know, like, but That's, yeah. 
That's too funny, man. Yeah, you can't break any type of breaking in, even if you know the code is cracking, I guess. Yes, yes. Uh, Without permission, it's safe cracking, yes. So that I'm guessing that's what sent you uh, up the road? Well, yeah, uh, when I was 18. And uh, I mean, but like I said, they, they slap on the wrist eight to 10 months. And I was like pretty much still youth or whatever. So I went to Polk um, Youth Center. I don't mm -hmm. know if you've ever heard about it. It's pretty, pretty it's pretty bad it's like the only there's two places in north carolina that's got um max like mcon you know what i'm saying and M one's pope one's maximum pope security Houston. yeah yeah but not like icon or um down here in north carolina because is y I, I heard you talk about like level twos level threes is that y'all's yards yeah is like that, depending on your crime if you got a serious one you go to like a level four or level five what prison yeah yeah, yeah, see, okay, ours is same thing, depending on your crime or whatever. Um, you, We got close custody, medium custody, and minimum custody. Okay. And, and um, you know, and if you, like, catch a body, you got to go straight to um, most times central prison, like in Raleigh, but then you got to be in um, uh, close custody until you got 15 years or less and you can't get to um then you're in medium custody and that's where i was at at bertie on medium bro when that happened yeah oh yeah and let me give the people a recap really quick uh i just made a community post on it but i did a story and this is how he found me uh i did a story coming from bertie prison in north carolina where a sergeant was killed beat to death from the from what i remember in the article yeah. with a fire yeah. extinguisher yeah yeah. And you said that you were there or you were in the I, cell block. Which one was it? I was there. I watched it. I, oh, I watched my. It. So, okay. I thought you were just in the prison. So, you watched nah, this. No, nah, bro. No, nah. it was on 10 to D pod on uh, Bertie medium custody. I've been to close custody too, but it was on medium custody. And then, like, it was, it, and I'm. I remember you saying you was in somewhere like this before. It's a 74-man dorm. It's like you walk in, there's bunk beds on the bottom, there's a stair rail in the center, and there's bunk beds up top. Yeah. And then there's showers in the corners. Yeah. That's, that's how tan unit is. And, uh, yeah, dude, I knew the guy that did it and everything, man. Like, we well, smoked too. Like, well, was, before we get into that story, right. give us a uh, – okay, so – how was that prison? You go into this, so that birdie is the first prison that you went to. <laughs> no, no. Uh, like I said, I did the eight to ten months when I was eighteen. Uh, came home, um, caught a bunch of breaking in and stuff like that. Like I said, man, um, I, I had a bad problem with pain pills. And stuff. It's all good. It's all good, man. And uh, so when I finally ended up going to court, um, I think it was two thousand. 2014 or 15, I, I was finally in court to handle all my charges. And this, this this being my first plea, I was only in the county for maybe two and a half months. You know, Brittany acting crazy, like, I'm ready to go. So, dude, I signed the first plea they gave me. They gave me four 10 to 12 box garden. So, 10 to 12 is actually 10 to 21s, but they take nine months post-release off each one. So, it's 10 to 12, 10 to 12, 10 to 12, 10 to 12. But I had to do three of them active and get off of one on probation. So you had and to do three of them back to back? Yeah, I had to do, yeah, three 10 to 12s and then get out with one on probation. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, um, but, not, I, but I actually had it easy, man. Like most people, you know, when they got a bunch of crimes and stuff, you know, they start out in close custody, work their way down to medium and then green. You know what I'm saying? Or at least start out in medium. They, they sent me straight to green clothes. And you know what I'm doing? You know what I'm doing? Messing <laughs> up. Yeah. Tunchi, tunchi, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, just wilding out. Tunchi. Yeah. Okay, so that's what everyone's calling, like, K2 or Spice, yeah. right? Yeah, that, yeah. So that's a big thing in Carolina as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was before the paper, too. Like, the paper stuff is like, you know what I'm saying? You you can't judge it, bro. It, it, it Like... It'll you can't judge it. But the stuff we had, was having was like the green leafy stuff. You know yeah. what I mean? But it was still it was still pretty crazy. How let's backtrack to the first to the green clothes department. All right. Okay. Uh, how was how was coming in to the to the green clothes? I mean, 
going into prison your first time, I mean, was it a obstacle where you're having some issues, some guys give you some hard times, messing with you or what? And see, it, 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 it was uh, my second time in the um in the penitentiary because I had to do the eight to ten months the first time. Oh yeah, time. yeah, that's right. Okay, so it was kind. Of, so that's prison technically oh, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I left the worst place you could go for like youths and where they got the uh, um uh, max time at Polk Youth Center. I left from there. I had a process for like thirty five days, and then I went to this place in Durham called Guest Road. And when I from leaving Polk and we pulled up to this little prison, dude. I honestly, God, I thought it was like an elementary school. I was like, what is this, dude? I mean, the fences <laughs> were like six foot, like six foot off the ground. Like, it was like the sweetest green clothes camp in North Carolina at the time. Like, really. Messed that up. <laughs> no, I, I wouldn't. No, because that was my first time in prison. So I wasn't like. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> wait, you know, and going home. But, uh. So I kind of knew what to expect when I got there um, the second time. Um, at, it, I was, this was at Greene County um, when I was my second time. And um, I didn't make it three months, man, before I kept catching, you know, A charges for – because they hit you with um, possession. You know, a drug test is a possession charge. You know what I'm saying? It's like if you get caught – if you fail a um, drug test, it's like an a, A12 or A14. That's the same thing as getting caught with it in your hands. So you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. I kept catching, dirty, kept catching dirty urines, and like I said, that too will have you out of it, man. They, I heard the um the uh the thing ring, and I was like, oh man, it's count time. I'm in two buildings across from where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> You're one of the like, building hey. jumpers. <laughs> dude, yeah, me and all my buddies were like, dude, they just call count, bro. So we tried to jet out, man. The sergeant and a couple of them were sitting in the horseshoe. They're like, hey, come here, come here, come here. I'm like, what, man? Um. Do you remember when you could get the uh the Sony radios? The yeah. Square, the, the gray the ones? Square? Huh? Were they gray? Yeah, they were clear. They were clear, but they were Sony's. They were like, they wasn't like the little clear tunes they give you now. Now you get these little bitty ones like this. You used to get these Sony janks like this. Yeah, we big. got Sony ones that were that like that size, but they weren't clear. They were gray. I've seen clear ones, but the ones they were selling at the time were just solid gray. Okay, okay. Well, it, it was when... You know, <clears throat> I was doing my thing there too, so I, I always had like a good radio. But I had my Sony, and uh, and I used to keep a um deodorant cap on the bottom of my radio, like I would like set it down and stuff, it, it, like a you know a degree um deodorant cap. I'd yeah. stick it on the bottom, or, um or whatever. So when they pulled us out, <laughs> and it was like, y'all come here, we're gonna search y'all. They searched all us. We're like, yeah, we're good, man. And then I got looking at my radio. I'm like, man. So I slid my radio over. He was like, oh, I'll bring it here. He grabbed it, man, pulled that deodorant cap off, man. And like three caps of K2 fell out. I was like, ah, oh, man. He Damn, was like, lock him bro. up. Lock him up. And it was a sergeant. So I went to the hole. Um, and I, like I said, I was there for like 45 days. And they busted me back. Damn. And uh, go to And you go to Bertie. <laughs> Dude, I was there. I was there 16 days when this happened. Okay, well, let me ask you this about... Uh, I don't know if you're even part of it or not, but I ask everyone, man. Was there any kind of point in time when you came into prison, any kind of white organizations or anything along those lines came your way? Yeah, yeah. yeah. How how did that go down, man? Maybe uh, you could break that down a little bit. I mean, I don't know. It was more it was more along the lines with... um. The cats that I liked on the yard, you know what I'm saying? Like, well, who, the, well, who, who, what kind of, uh, is it A, B in Carolina? Is it like, cause there's like seven different kind of names yeah. for none of that. None of okay, that. Okay. Okay. What would they call them in the, out there? What would the be like the white guys running up on someone? What would they go by? Like the white boys? Yeah. Uh, BFG. What is that? Uh, BFG. BFG. Yeah, Bound for Glory or whatever. Yeah, it's like a it's it, I don't think like they're stamped in in um California, but there there was some like really like one of the founders is like is from North Carolina and like I don't know, but that's why I say like that's why I said that about white people earlier because like the way they would do it was just I all right so. Know. Let's say a white guy comes in. That's the name that he's. That's gonna ring bells when it comes to gangs for whites. Is bound for glory. That's like the number yeah. one thing that yeah. you've seen for that side of yeah. things. All right. Now yeah. let's speak about other uh, 
organizations that people might see bloods crips all that stuff's in the prisons you've seen as well yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, most definitely, most what, definitely. What about, uh, this is uh, uh, another toss-up that a lot of people don't really understand. Like, Virginia, when I was in doing time, there wasn't many Spanish cats. Is it like that in Carolina? Uh, Gang-banging and all that stuff? Oh, not gang-banging, no, no. Yeah, yeah. No. See, that's a major difference from a lot of prisons, you know what I mean? Yeah. And a lot of people don't understand that. That's true, man, that's true. Like, uh, and... And like um, like they would keep me like they would honestly, God, bro, Josh. Like I'm, at, I don't know if y'all have if they label y'all SRG or STG or whatever. Yeah, yeah, there. I've heard all that. Yeah, okay, like security risk group and stuff like that. Just from like people I walk the yard with and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, but yeah, man. Like uh, I was I saying uh, begging for groceries? No, I mean bound for uh, bound for glory. Oh no, no, bro. You just shots fired. I don't even. Hey, what well, they always get trying to get you to get some commissary, huh? <laughs> Out of all organizations, bro, they were the laughing stock. And at like most camps I went to, close custody camps, they could not even get off the bus. They were not allowed there. They weren't allowed there. Dude. Who was like, checking them? Like, what do you mean? The whole entire every, every like all organizations were like. All organizations were so. What the like, heck? That's crazy. So none of them yeah, stood up for themselves like, or nothing. It's nothing. But I will say this because all, 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 all white boys ain't like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like for sure. I've, I've met like you know, out of like four years that I did in state man, like I met probably four, uh, four of them that was like about that life, you know. And most of them were older heads, like an older head um, named Bulldog and stuff like that. But like they're nothing <laughs> like California. Nothing like California. Let's jump into the story, man. Uh, Bertie, what's the lockdown status of this, uh, where this event took place? Okay, um, do you mean like the lockdown status after it happened? No, like before it happened, what was the lockdown status? What What was uh, the movements like in the, in the oh, cell dude. block? It, uh, dude, it was great, man. Like I said, I just got busted back from Green County, Green Clothes, and I, I went there, it's, and it was medium custody, but it was a 74-man dorm. And dude, that you think you could sit in the day room right there, like burn bud, whatever. They didn't care, you know what I'm saying? It's just it was the hood, you know what I'm saying? And like I've heard you say, you know, inmates run some yards, police run some yards, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. It was one of those, you know what I'm saying? And I like those. I, 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 I'd rather be around, you know, the killers and stuff than people that's gonna tell on everything you do. It's like I don't know, that's just me, man. Like, but, um. I, like I said, I wasn't even there three weeks, man. I'll never forget the day it happened. Uh, it was April 26th, uh, 2017, because my birthday is April 22nd. And you so, said you knew the guy who did it. How did you end up meeting him before, before uh, all that I happened? Got, when I first got there, you know, and I, I like I said, I was there for almost three weeks or whatever right when it happened. And, like, you know, he was a good drawer. Um, he smoked. He liked to smoke. We walked around the track and stuff together. But it's really sad how it happened, bro, like, why he really, like, lost it, man, because um, he had he already had a life sentence. And um, he was trying to get to this camp, and it's called Nash Correctional. And, um, like – Max level like, prison, I'm guessing? No, no it was another uh, medium um, custody. Oh, camp. and they denied him. No, no, they accepted him. That's the crazy thing, and like, like, like what I be talking about, like Bertie, like these are institutions which is close custody and medium and medium built on. You know what I'm saying? It's just like one big yeah. Prison. Like you can you can make your levels and never leave that place. Yeah. Okay. He he did got approved to go to um Nash to some program where you had to have like 20 years or more. It was like some good program. He was on the backlog or whatever. Well, I remember they called him down because on uh, medium custody, you ship on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Well, they come got him one Monday night and said, pack your stuff, come downstairs. He went down there. They they couldn't figure out where he was supposed to go, so they sent him back up. Okay, they did that twice that week. They did it on Monday night and Wednesday night. All right. The next week, and we like I said, we was on TAN 2, which is upstairs. And because people on TAN 1 means they worked in the kitchen. Okay, tan two is like the projects. You're either in school or you don't do nothing. So yeah. he, that's where he thought he was gonna stay because he's about to be leaving. <clears throat> well, the, the sarge come and got him and was like, uh, "You're about to go to tan one." 
which meant he was getting a job in the kitchen. And he was like, no, no, ma'am. He's like, I'm about to be leaving any time. And she was like, get your stuff and be ready or catch a write-up. And a write-up would have got him off that backlog anyway to go to the next camp. And this is the sergeant? Yeah, yeah, the female sergeant. Her name was was Megan. Her name was Megan Callahan, <clears throat> but um. And how was she, before you move on with the story? Uh, keep in mind, Megan Callahan is the sergeant that ends up losing her life. Uh, what kind of sergeant was she? Was she by the book, strict, tough, what? Tough, tough, tough. I, like I've only been there three weeks, but it, it, every time I seen her, that's how she was. Like I don't know, man. Like I've seen some crazy things in prison, man, with with males. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know if it's because it was a female or what. No, I don't know. Like, I feel like way later on, I'll have, like, PTSD or something. I don't know. My mom was like, you'll be able to get a check or something. Like, it, it, I mean, it's kind of, I'm on, I'm on video. We're in a day room. Like, like it's just. You, oh, okay, okay, man. It, well, let's hear it, man. Let, let's okay. hear it. Break it down. Okay. Exactly okay. how you want and need to break it down, man. All right. Uh, so. <laughs> Uh, like I said, he was supposed to ship out um, on uh, Tuesday, uh, Monday night and Wednesday night. They sent him back upstairs both times. Okay. Then, like, Saturday came around, and that's when uh, Miss Callahan, the sergeant, came through, and she was like, um, hey, Wisnick, um, pack your bags. You're going to Tan One, which can only mean he's getting a job in the kitchen. He's like, no, man, I'm about to be shipping any day. And that's when she's like, Pack your stuff, get ready, or catch a write up, which would have kicked them off the backlog anyway. So I was on the phone with my Brittany. I was down, I was down on the phone, like <laughs> trying to get numbers or something, you know, like some JPay or Cash App or some numbers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> all I hear is like dude yelling, yelling. So I look over, and I told Brittany, I was like, I was like, I don't know. I said, dude over here blanking um on his people or whatever. And, but then I heard him say, Mom whatever but then he banged the phone he slammed it and i was like i was like i don't know so i was still talking to her man it was him him, though it was the dude it was craig yeah craig whistling and then talking to his mom mom and his sister on the phone yeah i found out a little later i guess he was telling them you know he's about to turn up or something i don't know but next thing you know not even two minutes later i started smelling smoke bro and i turned around and the trash can was on fire like right behind me like I was like, Brittany, let me get off here, man. People's making shit hot. I'll call you back. I don't know what's going on. But when I hung up the phone, everybody else had done back away from, like, that area. Because it was just be like, the little picnic tables where you could see the TVs right there. And the bunks were in the back. And everybody then started, like, backing up towards the back. And I was like, and, you know, all my homies like, Wes, Wes, come on, bro. Just come on. Man. Like, get over here. And I was like, but it didn't take me long to see what was going on. He's standing at the microwave. You know what I'm saying? Just standing there, like. I was like, the Craig guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and as soon then I see her come, the sergeant come, because, you know, it's all blast. They can see everything. Like, she looks, shakes her head, and tell them to poke, um, pop the door. As soon as they pop the door, she looked at us, shake her head, and walked over, and she was spraying the trash can, and that's when he come running from the microwave with a tumbler full of, like, water. I guess just water or, like, maybe some chemicals. It was hot, though, and when he threw it on her. And... You know, he couldn't really do nothing with her. He was hitting herself, but he couldn't really do nothing with her. But they both ended up falling, I guess, where he threw the water and they slipped or something. I don't know. But, was she, well, did she scream or what? No, nah, no, nah, bro. Like, 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 like I said, like, he really wasn't doing nothing to her. Like, if she wouldn't have dropped that and he got that, she might would have, like, really put it on him. <laughs> like, for real, like. But that's what happened. She uh she ended up losing the fire extinguisher, and when she was going to get up, is when he grabbed it. And you know what I'm saying, bro? Like so, they were re- fighting. They were fighting. Yeah, he was punching her stuff. But I guess he's seeing he he couldn't do nothing with her. So you know. So she, so like, she was she was holding holding yeah, her she, own. She was holding her own, you know. But they're both on the ground. And then I guess when next thing you know, I'm looking, I'm still watching whatever she's going to get like get up off the ground. And that's when I see him grab the the, uh, the big industrial joints, bro. Yeah, the Not silver the ones? ones. No, the big red ones they usually keep by like the sergeant's office. They're like, yeah, they're, they're like, massive. Yes, dude. All right, and he ran over there to her, bro, and he didn't hit her like this, bro. He's hitting her like this, like, and in the like, face. 
Yeah, only the bass, bro. And like I hear you say all the time about that 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 uh that metal, that metal floor or whatever, that steel or whatever. And that's how I know like you wouldn't hear no team. It was just straight head. You know what Thonks. I'm saying? At, once I seen him, once I seen him hit her one time, I said, bro, he's going, he's going to long term, bro, for at least two years. You know what I'm saying? Like, she could have been gone right then. I know he hit her probably about eleven times, bro. And then, and then, like you read in the um in the paper part, um, all she had was two female uh officers on the floor with her. And, and one they, of them they, was like a trainee, right? A trainee, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, they they got them to open the um the sliding door, or whatever. And they're standing; they won't even come in. They're standing from the door, spraying him. So you know what he does? You heard read it. He starts spraying them back with the fire extinguisher, bro. Like everything's so cloudy, alarms blaring, like dude. And then after he did that, he he walked up to Miss Callahan uh, right above her and sprayed her head and everything. Like dude, it was so brutal, bro. Like. It was brutal, and um, that's when the um, LT and the superintendent and all them um, started making their way in. And they're like, "Son, just you know, you know, get to, get on your knees, man. Cuff up, cuff up." And I could see he was doing something like this, but I couldn't tell. And that's when I found out he had a piece of a gla- his glasses or something trying to do something, but he couldn't. And uh, he finally cuffed up, but when um. They and when they took him out, all the nurses come running in, and they made all of us get on our bunks. But like, like I said, it's just a seventy-four um, open dorms, and I'm up top. You're and getting an overhead up, view of this. Yeah, I could see down there. Yeah, yeah. We didn't get on our bunks until you know after they took him out. Like, yeah, yeah. So, but oh yeah, I forgot to tell you this. Like when he was doing that, bro. After I seen him hit her like three times, I turned around and went like this, Josh, and put my head. You over couldn't here. even see it no more. I didn't want to hear it, dude. Bro, it that's like, giving me goosebumps. It's I'm brutal, getting, bro. I'm getting goosebumps. I don't know. Look at my arm, y'all. I got Ooh. goosebumps, man. That's what I would have done too. There ain't no way I could have sat there and watched that shit, bro. Ooh. Like, and then, um, so anyways. Oh my. The nurses and all come running in, and like everybody that was there knew there's no way possible. But we heard the nurse roll her over and they're like, "We got brain matter or whatever." It, 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 and what bothers me, man, I don't know if it's like the shock or like I don't know, man. But like I don't have nightmares right now, you know. But I know people say it long, like it later in life, like it, it could really, really affect me. You know what I'm saying, like. So I I hope not. But anyways, like they um the S um the perk team came. I don't know what y'all was like special Cert people. team, yeah. Yeah, ours is the perk team or whatever. Okay, so they took us all out um off our bunks instead of going down through like the set where they open the sal the sally port doors or whatever and we go down or whatever. We went out through the side door that goes outside and you like had emergency to exit type thing. Yeah, emergency exits, yes, yes, yes. And we had to go down, you know, to the bottom floor where the, uh, the yard is. And we went in through this fence and we went into another unit, which was called Red Unit. And it was an empty unit. You know, I know I think some of it's made for modified, which is when you're coming off of like Icon and stuff. But, dude, they had us in there single cells with no mats, no property, nothing for three days, dude. We didn't have nothing. Like, we're just in there. Like, look I at Luckily, I had my radio with me when when they said, you know, everybody start coming out the side. Yeah, right yeah, yeah. But dude, it was crazy, man. Then uh, uh, the very next day, um, these people came called the um SBI, I think SBI. It ain't the FBI, it's the SBI. And um, they come, they started getting people one at a time and taking them to talk to this person. But anyways, um, I walked straight in. I was like, dude, I was like, I'm not going to court testifying. I was like, you, you got cameras seen it happen. Your your police seen it happen. Um, but this is, dude, they try to like put guilt on us and was asked like, why didn't y'all do something? It's like, dude, and, but one dude did run over. One dude did run over and he never even got brought back to red unit with us or nothing. We never, we don't know what happened to him. I was like, man, I could have been hemmed up in accessory or trying to help him or something. And, you know what I'm saying? Like, and it, and it really blew everybody's mind, bro. What, nobody cheering them on or nothing like that, dude. Everybody was like, oh, my God. Like, well, I mean, just, something like that happens, bro. It's it's like almost that, so dude. quick. Yeah, it's so quick that after the first couple beats with a fire extinguisher, I mean, 
And he's bro, you don't police with the fire extinguisher. You can't see nothing in there, bro. Alarms yeah. are blowing, man. Like, dude, it was crazy. And like, this is what I was thinking. I was like, man, I was just an honor grade 18 days ago. Now I'm <laughs> I'm in the penitentiary. For Welcome real to now. prison, my friend. I didn't I mess up. I didn't mess up. Bro. Like, and that but, is uh, just unreal. I mean, okay, so did they? I'm guessing they moved y'all out the unit because. They had to move the body and do uh, right, right. evidence. They didn't move the body at all completely out while you were in there, did they? Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. They oh, did. they, they did? Because they had a, a helicopter or ambulance or something down there, but they were trying to save her life. Yeah, they were trying to. But Oh, okay. Would they just roll her onto a stretcher or what? A stretcher, and they toted her down. But like I said, I heard the nurses saying, we got brain matter. Like, I knew there was... If you if anybody there knew there was no way she could have made it, no way. Like, but um, if you turned your head, bro, and did what you said, it had to be a game I over mean, type of all, situation. Dude, all the triple OG killers, bro, was just like, like scared, bro. They didn't know, like, it was, I don't know, man. But any um, anyways, um, everybody that was in, like that, oh yeah, and that um block that it happened in. Uh, Tan Two Depot is still closed to this day. It's a memorial. Mo- it's a memorial yeah. for her. Yeah, and, that's um, sad, man. Damn, it's very sad, bro. And, and I had to find this out because, like I said, I have my radio. I heard it come on the next day that she just had. She had a two-year-old daughter. Um, hadn't been it hadn't been married. Um, not even six months, and she was only twenty-nine. I was like, man, man, that is so crazy, man. Yeah, uh. I've seen I've seen people get hit with door plates, bro. In the like, you know, it, it, it and and it don't really phase me, bro. I guess with it being a female, I don't know, bro. It, yeah, I think that's really, what it is. Is what what it mainly is. You know what I mean? Uh, it's something you just don't do, man. You know. It's, and I see, like I see I used to see my mom get beat on and stuff. Like I ain't I don't know, man. It's just it was brutal. It, it I feel. Well, I feel, look, man. Uh, with that story being so dramatic as it is, I think we're going to wrap it up right there. But I know just by from what you said, you got more to talk about. You got more stories about your life and prison and all that, man. So, uh, you know, anytime you want to come back on for part two, I'm really looking forward to it, man. I enjoyed the story. Uh, I understand that this might be your fr- like you were talking to me uh, before the video. This might be your first time in a social media kind of setting, telling stories. Mm-hmm. And I yeah, understand it, it could be nervous for you. I was nervous doing it too. So uh, you did great, though. I think you Thank did great, you, and uh, your story it gave me goosebumps, bro. And that I think only happened like one or two other times with people telling it. You know, so. Yeah, man. I, like I said, I seen where you had posted, man. I was like, and, and and that ain't when I first learned about you. Like I said, I've been watching you about a year, but I was like, I gotta reach out for him for that. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I appreciate you getting back with me, bro. I really do. Really like anytime, man. Good. And uh, where do you want people to come look for you as of right now? I don't know if you got anything uh, jumping Instagram. I know that for sure, but yeah, but it's, it's a new account. Um, uh, just, I get just my Instagram for right now. I don't know. Um or my Facebook. I don't know. I've had my Facebook for a little while longer, but they shut my Instagram down for some reason. I don't really know why, but... But you're going to be making a YouTube, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I'm trying to... I'm trying to um, think on, like, what, what to do it on. Like, uh, I don't know. I was... I, like, I've seen a lot of, like, hood vlogs and stuff. Uh-huh. Like, and I'd like to, like, go around some of these, like, people I know in the trailer parks and, like, let these people see, like... Hey. <laughs> how, I'd watch that for sure, bro. <laughs> like, like, your man's, your man's. That was in a VA, bro. Oh, Grizzy. Oh, God, I had a friend just identical to that man, bro. Identical to him. It's like, it's crazy. You never but, know, uh, man. You know, small world. Well, but, yeah. Uh, hey, if you decide to do the trailer park thing, man, going through the hoods and chilling with the people in the area, man. That I swear, but, I would tune in. That sounds dude, very. I look. Dude. I, Look, when I was young, I, I grew up in the trailer park. I had friends in the trailer park. It gets wild, man, and the stories are endless, man. You yeah. know what I mean? It's so, always entertaining. And I think uh, <laughs> you sling ink, bro. Like, you, oh, I heard you say that. Like, yeah, yeah, ink. I do. I haven't done it in a while, but yeah, I do, man. It's like riding a bike. 
Man, I, yeah, I was it, checking bro. some of it, man. You got some good work done, believe it or not. Better than my leg. work. <laughs> I did on my leg, but but uh Yeah, it yeah, looks man. good, man. I'm sure you got some prison story tattoo stories too. Yeah, that I mean the I've tried to run um, a street gun one time, but it was before prison. I, I didn't really like the feeling, but that prison gun, bro, like. Yeah, I nice and light. You can like riding a bike, man. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. But um, again, man, I appreciate you, bro. I hey, appreciate you. Likewise, man. Salute to you. And uh, any kind of links you want me to put in the description for people to come find you, let me know, and I'll keep it there for you all the viewers I'll, to go I'll follow. And one more time uh, to wrap it up. My condolences go out to that sergeant's uh, sure. family members and the kids that unfortunately were left behind, man. It's sad to yeah. see. But that's yeah. that's reality of prison from time to time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It can be very nightmarish. Yeah.